Hey guys, happy Tuesday. My name is Garrett Hartle and this is Reach Out Reptiles. Wait a minute, this isn't Reach Out Reptiles, where are we? Oh yeah, we're at Andrew Acevedo's house. Cause it's time for Talk'em Up Tuesday. I got a little special episode for you guys, so you're gonna enjoy this. in the new and improved reptile room. Soon to be. Definitely. Are you gonna paint the walls green on this one too? No, no, oh, we're keeping So what's kind of like your plans for this place? Obviously you got, it's under construction at this point. The main focus is definitely just to expand the Superdorfs as much as we can, and just to push it in a positive direction and hopefully just expand it to as much room as this room allows and then see where it goes from there. Okay, cool. No, this is definitely, I mean, that's the great thing about Superdorfs is they don't take a lot of space, they don't take a lot of space. This reasons. is definitely enough room in comparison to what I'm working with now to really expand it to where I want to be and to be able to grow it and be able to keep back as much as I'd like to push this to the next level for sure. Yeah. The whole basement before, you know, the Superverse really took over, it was all monitors and yeah, croc monitors, Salvatore, you That's know, crazy. you name it, it was down here at one point in time and may have even found a way. We've had sal one Salvatore found its way and it was behind here for a week. Oh my goodness, like in the wall? Yeah, it was in the wall, it was in the wall, and luckily since that there's a little- A Salvatore, there. not the- Water monitor, not a croc monitor, no, no crocs. I would hate to try no to wrangle one of those no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That would be nuts. Well, so guys, Andrew is, uh, as actually, I'm, I've been a big fan of his for a long time, <laughs> and it's because, even though he, uh, you know, it's, what I would consider a small breeder, a hobbyist breeder. Sure. Um, he's he's super specialized and really focused in what he's doing. And uh, it's cool, like there's a lot of people that have a lot of cool stuff, but I think one of the biggest things that's lacking today in the reptile industry is that people don't follow through with stuff. Oh, for sure. It's... And, and I, I like to blame the younger generation all the time, <laughs> but I mean, this guy's, you know, what were you calling me pops earlier? <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, no, he's young, but he's got the follow through. So how old are you? 21. 21, 21. and how many generations of Superdorfs have you bred? Uh, depending on which project, but the farthest one right now is three, three generations. Three generations in at 21 years old. That's yeah. nuts. I think even now, it doesn't matter regardless of age, everyone has a project, it's just how far are you gonna see it through. If it wasn't for being able to keep larger snakes in a smaller size version, made it, you know, made that, envisionment of reality you know it's just mind-blowing that you've done this but to put it in perspective for you guys when you see these numbers 75 percent superdor phantom run us through this one project just so that everyone can get a perspective you bought the original mail for how much for 3500 and what year was that 2013 2014 okay so five years ago he, he starts with dropping 3500 dollars now you, you know nowadays you can buy a phantom mail for 10 times less but it doesn't matter Nobody has gone this far with this stuff because you had to buy it for 3500 at the time to get into it. Yeah. Now your first generation, when you made the 50 percenters, how many like good viable babies did you get out of that clutch? There was only four. Four. Okay, so $3,500 into it and you make four babies. And then you're going to keep at least one of those back and you raise that male up and you put it in the second generation and how many babies did you get out of that? That was another four. It was another four. four. The first time. Yeah, first time. This is a freaking eight snakes in five years with $3,500 invested. So, I mean, people ask why are Superdorf prices high? It's because nobody is willing to do this stuff, but the animals, I'm telling you, are incredible. For me in particular, the Phantom was just a trait that when I saw it and when I first was getting into retics, it was, that was it. It stuck with me and I knew, I was like, if I'm gonna ever produce these snakes and be fortunate enough to do it, that was the project I was gonna go. But knowing how big they got and most people couldn't keep, you know, the average person can't keep 
a 15 foot snake in their room, let alone a bedroom. So to be able to have to <laughs> minimize, you know, something that was possible, that was the only route and it was, it's, it's gone the way that I expected to. It just took a lot longer. Okay. So how did we actually meet or like we kind of, we actually definitely knew about each other before we for met. Sure, for sure. So, so I'll, I'll just, I'll go first. I met or became aware of you obviously through these, you know, really off the wall super door project. And it's funny because you have such a presence online with those breedings and now to learn that it was like, it was four snakes. The, the perspectives that we get of people on the internet, you only see a certain amount yeah, and yeah. you assume what the rest is. Yeah. So yeah, so I was glad I did finally reach out to you, but how did you? I was aware of you, what you were doing well before I was even breeding Super Dwarf Free Thicks. Seeing the video footage that you were putting out with the Super Dwarfs was really just kind of an inspiration to what I started doing before it was even a reality. So later I was fortunate enough to do the first ever Super Dwarf Jags. As far as I know, I'm not aware of anyone else that has done them. I believe maybe they've been done in Indonesia this year, but I'm not 100% certain. So okay. as far as I know, those are still the only ones. If you guys are watching from made. Indonesia, comment below. Please you tell me if there's more. Or if Please, I don't want to be the only yeah. one. <laughs> but tell me a little bit about that project. That's that project cool. was pretty much a ramble around idea with a, a close friend of mine. And when the time came to actually make it happen, we were just joking. Like we had no idea that that project was actually going to happen. And oh, really? it fortunately did. Like just to put things into retrospect, it took me, you know, two and a half years to make, you know, the first snakes that I wanted to make. So to, yeah. so I was, to just say, I'm like, yeah, we're going to try this first year and hopefully get it first year and it happened. It was, <laughs> it was a joke. And of course, when you don't take things as serious, it happens the way That's they the want it to be. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. I've made more Jags than I've had Phantoms and I haven't been trying, so. <laughs> That's very cool. Okay, so uh, we've run through some of the projects and stuff a little bit already, but what would you say is your uh, reptile specialty for for everybody that doesn't know you? For my specialty, I would have to say it's definitely the Super Dwarf Retix. I've been also fortunate enough to do King Gorms and I've done Vranish Tristis Orientalis in the past, but with VTOs, uh, black headed monitors to yeah, put in retrospect. Sorry, we're talking dwarf monitor lizards. Yeah. Other Australian species. Australian species. stuff, which yeah. I used to, I, that was some of the first animals that I bred back in the day too. I love them. Fun fact, my wife's uh, engagement ring was bought with uh, Aki money. <laughs> John and Dragon may be able to relate to that as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So, okay, very cool. Yeah. And then uh, you had some other fun stuff sitting in some of those tubs. I do, I do. I have some other stuff. I'm working with uh, Amazon Basins as well as Northern and more tree boas, as well as Gasherfolus persenia, green peeled lizards. Uh, what else? That's, that's really it. a few other things, but for the most part, those are the projects that we are, you know, I've been fortunate enough to really push forward and be able to actually produce at least more than one of each, you know, animal that I have and establish pairs of and that's you know cool. so it's yeah it's cool to just not just be able to just touch one project and be like wow i did good with that and to see to move you know that energy towards something else and to still have you know a positive outcome definitely pushes me to just keep going with this and i feel like as long as i just keep doing things in the direction that i'm headed you know and just give the animals time and don't rush anything and just be patient enough that's definitely the biggest thing that most people don't have in this hobby is patience because everyone has a time frame of how they want to yeah. Plan everything out. I want to invest five years worth of money into this project and that's as far as I'm willing to put into it when you don't realize that project may end up taking an additional five years just to... I think even if you're doing it professionally, you still have to definitely love actually working with the animals. Oh, 100%. It tests your patience. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh yeah. And it's definitely the ultimate test for me. Is You've had some patience. your share of heartbreak as well. I think anyone that has bred super dwarfs long enough and consistently, you will know that the, uh, the heartbreaks that come along with We're it. Still definitely. figuring them out. A lot of well, how many of you? You got a considerable number of wild caught animals too. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's a big part of it as well. I had more, and unfortunately, just due to issues that I ran into breeding, you know, it's unfortunately gone, you know, in a negative direction to where I don't have as many. But the few animals that I do, I'm just focusing on preserving those animals and just trying to push it toward the next step. And bringing up that next yeah, generation. Of course, yeah, yeah, just, cool. Now from a reptile industry perspective, what's like uh, one thing you like and one thing you don't like about the reptile industry? <laughs> that's an it's easy first, one. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. an easy one. The one thing I do like is the animals because that's the reason why I stick around. And the one thing I don't like is dealing with the public and actually having to sell animals. So, <laughs> that's, that's definitely so you like the animals, you hate the people. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> 
that's funny. Okay, well, that's, yeah. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to still meet a few people. I mean, you're one of them that, you know, that aren't uh, like the rest of the public, the general public. That I'm definitely not else. like the rest of the public. I like everybody. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about at all. Yeah, I'm making stuff up. <laughs> all right, so here's a, a random question for you, okay? Just so that we can kind of like get to know your personality. Like <laughs> Who I am, yeah. Okay, sure. yeah. So, uh, you know, if you hit the winning lottery ticket, someone sent it to you in the mail and you won, let's say, $2 million, what, are you, what is the first thing you're going to run out and do with that money? Either buy an island or a small piece of property in Indonesia and just be a bigger super dwarf breeder. <laughs> just release warming. all your eggs. Just release all the ones that I don't like and Let keep everything else. else. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, probably it. Or, uh, yeah, buy a small island with no one else on it and just have a bunch of animals. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully not too small. I mean, no, it's big enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's big you don't enough. want to be a healthy. super dwarf yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. All right. Well, the, so usually the final question is if people want to learn more about what you're doing and reach out to you, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, there's either two ways to contact me. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. You can contact me on AA Exotics at AA Exotics and I can answer any questions that you may have. It's AA Exotics, Exotics. Yes. at AA Exotics? Yes, my initials, Andrew Acevedo. Okay. Very cool. Or uh, you said Facebook and Instagram. Yes, that's all right so now. you guys can go get all your eye candy, your super yeah. eye candy over there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Very cool. Awesome. Well, hey, yeah, man. Thanks for having me out. That was, that was yeah. really cool to see the animals there. Yeah, was, dude. Can't wait for the next time. It. I love, I love seeing more super dwarfs. Though, Definitely. So. Soon enough, there's gonna be even more. Just this is the, this is the only little, not this particular corner, but this corner of the world is the only place you can come to see some of that stuff up there. So it's kind of surreal because I don't look at it like that. To me, it's, <laughs> just, it's just my hard work that I put into it, and you know, it's just. Cool you to, got some unique stuff up there. I, it was worth the drive for me for sure. Dude, I'm glad you came out and got to see everything because most people don't realize. I'm like, you, you need to see this animal in person oh, before man. you really understand. Absolutely. It, man. Yeah, you take, once you see it, it's you just take like happy picture. Wow. <laughs> exactly. Like, that's why I didn't stick with my photo major. <laughs> Very cool. All right, sweet. Well, hey guys, that's it for now, but we'll see you back here on uh, Friday for a free tip. Okay? Take her easy. <laughs> whoa, 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 you guys can't leave just yet. You didn't see my new sticker from Yosemite Reptiles. That's Kevin Shelton on Facebook. You guys ought to hit him up. And Kevin, thank you very much. Now, if you guys want to see your business sticker on my filing cabinet, just shoot it to the address below. And if I don't catch you before then, I'll see you guys on Friday right back here for your free tip. Have a great week.